Because, you know, people can talk. Surprise, motherfuckers. Ha <laughs> ha. Yeah, I'm back. This is Robert J. Van Droos here at your service. It's been a long time since I spoke to y'all, motherfuckers. But you know what? I've been kind of keeping on a low profile because I'm too damn cool for school. You know what I'm saying? That's right. Because, you know, people been talking a lot of shit lately. A lot of junk. And... I just thought I'd come out and let you know that I'm thinking about you. Once in a while, I get asked the question about what's going on inside my head. Now, I don't really have an answer. Just feverish ramblings. I usually respond with a question like, what do you feel? Well, besides very obvious, uncomfortable, clam feelings of impending calamity, you should try to take some time away from your stressed out day and worry about something even worse. <laughs> All right, this is important now. You should find the time to ask yourself a question. How many of you have? I can tell that a lot of people want to leave the social network of choice now. And counter likewise, many are also just perfectly happy with it and what they can do with it. Fair enough, I guess. I did say that I could tell though. Nah, what I mean by that is I felt the similar feeling of pulling myself away from what appears to be a close knit group or family, business, euchre club, echo chamber. The truth is that many in both camps share. What the fuck's going on? Very much in common. <laughs> As the evidence for the complete sheer violations of our natural born human rights continue to mount at an incredible rate of misconveyance while unapologetically adulterizing the very fiber of that seemingly immutable notion. Trust. Trust Dick. Trust your instincts on this. Not the anecdotal fables and mythos of our chaotically cataclysmic cancel culture couch captain corrupt comic cocksucker causing it to careen quite close to complete catastrophic conclusion. You're the proud new observers of a comedy. Tickets are free, but probably cost you your life over an incredibly long duration of almost living. It's kind of cathartic. Except if you try really hard, because then you're just a try. What the fuck, man? I, I'm not gonna dignify that with this comic. I'm having enough fun laughing at the underlords taking themselves too seriously. Ha! <laughs> Guess they didn't get the memo. Sorry, boys, you weren't invited to that one. Ha <laughs> ha! Oh, cupcake. The other thing I see is the sheer lack of understanding as to where to go from there. All oh, avenues lead you back on the path if you haven't noticed. It's not your fault. It's designed for that. The entire ecosystem, with the scientifically precise arcana of socially ergonomic commercial people tubes to expedite your journey to collect your top branded shit and be back on your way to your domicile. <laughs> There's only one way to go through it, unless you're gonna go in the opposite direction of the masses, which, well, it offers resistance, and, well, sometimes I do it to be a dick. But what can I say? Put the top dicks, the ecosystem incubates, coddles and nurses and suckles the ideas of peoples, envisioning forward-thinking inventions, even that which is spiritual, honest, practical, or useful. Things that give a unified people strength and a leg up on tomorrow. And if you do that super awesome, never been seen or done before thing, and you're unable to back up your crazy shit with an even crazier play, and a show of fiat strength, petrol, crypto, bloody old Honda, stained, oppressed, and really become what they fear, which is impenetrable, because that's what it's going to take. If the amount of energy necessary to take you out is more than they can afford, they do this thing that is rare, but funny to see. <laughs> they shut the fuck up. For a moment, a fleeting moment, 
as they plan your downfall though and how to mitigate you. You're probably not going to do well on the metaphorical full frontal balls to the wall assault style business plan crawl this fall chamboree and club ball. No sir, y'all. Just stall. Nobody likes anybody who gets anything done. You make everyone look bad, so cut that shit out immediately. I would rethink your business strategy and think how you'll be hedging against the batteries of legislational dogma that will follow regarding your super awesome never been seen or done before thing. Every technological or social upgrade is met immediately with charters, statutes, bills, amendments, bylaws, mandates, requests, demands, orders, warnings, tickets, offenses, warrants, raids, arrests, confiscations, until you have commissary. It's an organizationally provisioned financial account set up so that even the incarcerated can still take part in spending their fiat currency. I spent a night in the detainment facility in the UK before being deported from that country. Upon release of my possessions, I had to sign for five quid, which they bestowed upon me as I was leaving their lovely country. And it dawned on me in that moment that my acceptance of that five quid was accepting the other end of a contract. The term being that I get treated very realistically like a criminal, a free night stay in a state-of-the-art facility, and protected from even myself. Great. That would be most generously jabbing on about on everyone's favorite social media. <laughs> They'll get a kick out of me. And I play along and tell the story about the five British pounds and how to change your view of how all agreements are contractual. I stopped giving a fuck the minute I started the story. Here's where the final payoff is. You work hard to get here to this moment, so don't be angry if it's anticlimactic, okay? No climax is a bad climax. Here it is. Everything requires that they operate, at the very least, by their own rules. But a set of rules nonetheless. Giving me five thousand pounds wasn't about fetching me a pint when my plane landed in Canada. No, the five pounds merely concluded an economic transaction which Her Majesty was absolved of any mistreatment to me, as was made clear by the fact that I accepted it and left. Accountability is based on one's ability to respect the old rules of humanity. Yes, a certain amount of cohesion is necessary for a group to cohabitate and be social, which is what I call humanity. It would be good that all in the group have legs and arms, heads, brains, and such. There are definite aspects for individual recognition, but nobody innately wants to be that guy. Or that gal that does or doesn't do that thing that may or may not have a name because we got rid of nouns completely due to pronoun privilege. Pricks. They use a system that's loosely bound by rules and they are what we have to work with. The internet's the same way. It's a code base that relies on things to work because of rules. Don't get me started on how surprised any of the old school propeller heads whether any of this shit works at all. Very intelligent people are very clever at using these counting machines that can do ridiculous things as good or as exceedingly better than the boomer progenitors of the Arpanet. We grew. I mean, they grew into it. Downriggers popped and it's time to reel this catfish in. Time to come back full circle now. It doesn't matter what you use. You alone know what your intention is, and you alone live with that intention until you unleash it with your actions. Now, all the worst things you can imagine they do with your intentions, well, they do it while punching puppies and wearing socks and sandals. However, they do it on a tangible system that operates on rules determined by it not working if it's done wrong. The laws that govern your fifth of the eyes are also operate on sets and subsets of jurisdictional laws that operate on a constantly growing caseload of precedents built on the intentional shoulders of the immutable human laws that you don't even need arms or hands or feet to partake in, although they help considerably. If you're under the illusion that a document is what gives you your rights, you're mistaken. You never stop being human now, did you? Nah, you may have just stopped being in the way of one is all. I do it all the time. None of us are at fault for that. It's how it works. It gives us spirit. 
Our natural born senses are super cool to us motherfuckers, but are actually quiet shit that convey in the real reality around us. As our brains are processing an incredible amount of information and performing a colossal amount of heavy lifting in order to make this experience survivable. The emergence of a new conscious collective is upon us now, manifesting this reality as we create it in our visions. So wake up, motherfuckers, we got work to do. And that's what goes on inside my head. This is Robert J. Vandross. Mm-hmm. Signing out. Peace, motherfuckers. Much love. Welcome to the Daily Nooner Reno. I almost forgot to switch my mic on. Actually, I did forget. How are you people today? Wow. What a... What a new day of wonder it is to be Canadian. (laughs) Uh, I'm speechless. I'm undoubtedly speechless. Wasn't so speechless last night. Uh, We did the... Kind of spur of the moment, Truth Hurts podcast last night. My friend Tara from way back, we just kind of had to sit back and reflect and think about what just the last 10 years has brought us to. And some will understand exactly what I mean. Others might be a bit puzzled, you know, if you've only clued in recently. It's easy to, you know, mass form hypnosis or psychosis rather uh yeah this is, this is, this is hashtag that <laughs> but uh wow <clears throat> well klaus schwab our new boss yeah <laughs> i don't even know what to say uh, and on to better things. So what is this all amounting to? What are we doing? What is EPG? What's uh, the whole bit? Well, it's just basically, I guess, as close to an open source company as you're going to get. And, uh, you know, I'm trying to create an environment basically that people can come and just work on shit, develop stuff. Uh, there's always something I want to try and, and push forward. Um, just kind of get people kind of working collaboratively on basically distributed networks, uh, that kind of technology, and and providing places for people to do stuff. Use this technology for ourselves rather than use the platforms that are given to us. It's, I don't know. I have a whole bunch of podcasts I've done in the past, and I've got some, like, series that I have, like, kind of sort of planned to do regarding the ARPANET and the history of the whole machine, if you would. There's going to be some uh, coming up, and so there, I think, I predict it anyway, I think there's going to be some... See, what a lot of people don't realize is, yes, this system has been designed from day one to be what it is, and it's a a computational machine, but they're computating aspects of the human race, like, in real time. That was kind of the initial dream, I guess you could say, back in the 60s. 
and uh, they've achieved it. They've achieved it, but not without the blood, sweat, and tears and lives of many a uh, uh, developer and people in in the in the you know program programming uh, genre. Uh, um, sorry, uh, job profile that basically works and troubleshoots and invents new stuff like the actual you know people create like the tcp ip protocol over at cern and shit like that like these things though they they work based on rules like it's a rule set and uh it's surprising any of it works to be honest with you it's like, like a, it could have gone in, in a couple different roads i suppose like in how they decided to you know tackle certain problems with packet based uh, uh internet protocol so it's like all right there's only one real way for it to work but there's so many ways to make that thing do that same job and i just it's just hey it works that's great and then you know have to implement security have air, you know error checking and uh redundancy and all sorts of different things so anyway and <laughs> errant packages, copy packages, intercepted packets, packets that don't want to be intercepted, <laughs> you name it. But uh, anyway, it's a it's a wild, wild world in there. And anyway, we, it, it does require rules and, and there's mechanisms and ways uh, that, that it, you know, these are the things that the people that are in the know can can implement and and utilize. You know, like hackers, you know, whether you're white hat or black hat, it's still the same thing is that these things were, you know, they, 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 they operate based on these rules, these programming rules. If the logic in those rules and programs are broken or not working as, you know, as securely as they should be, well, then, you know, th there could be a potential for an exploitation and, well, whatever the result is of that is determined at the time. That's what hacking is. <laughs> it's like kind of you're kind of sort of half figuring it out while you're doing it. You got to come up, you hit a, a, a wall, and say, "Okay, well, what's the next option?" And then, yeah, and everything's you know. Sometimes you get a, you get you get you know you get a break, and then you start the list right over from scratch again. But anyway, <laughs> it's uh, it's just figuring shit out. That's what hacking is. That's you know, at the end of the day, but. Um, we're not into that. We're just into content creation and helping people publish themselves. That's my biggest goal. That's my biggest goal here. You know, um, you know, like, you know, take you by the arm and say, "Hey, there you go." There's a whole wild world of like self-publishing options. Um, we're going to do um, our own foray into publishing ourselves. Um, just uh, you know, we're starting off indie. And when I say we, I say me and my business partner, uh, as a, a wonderful lady out of Canada. Uh, she's in uh, the east uh, in Ontario, and uh, I'm out here. So between us, we are a cross-Canada company. So, hey. <laughs> but uh, she operates uh, Dragon Queen Design and Print Solutions, and uh, she does uh, web to print ordering and and and, and delivery. She's um, just about got her website ready to go. So uh, I will uh, leave links. They're pretty easy to find. If you run over to uh, epgn.ch, you'll find links for uh, Dragon Queen herself. So uh, yeah, I know it's pretty cool stuff. And uh, yeah, we're we're starting to make the breakout with the marketing now. And hopefully we can get EPG up and going just as a, as a publishing company, but as an independent publishing company. So if people, you know, want to want to send in works and stuff or come in, come in and check out the site. I'm in <laughs> I'm the only guy working the computer stuff. So basically it's a, it's I'm kind of spread out thin. But I mean, if I see people coming in and want to do stuff, I will focus on the areas that people are using things. And it's uh it's a humble server. It can't have. It can't handle a, a, a shit ton of people. But it's not. It's not horrible either. It's uh, you know. It's pretty good. So it's good enough for now. And it's all I can afford. So whatever. If we can uh, turn this uh, bad boy around, maybe we can get this thing uh, at least uh, um, paying for itself, and then we can start you know scaling it up. But uh, yeah, I run uh, on that server. I also have um, beertube.epgn.ch and. I have um, the it's a, it's it's kind of like a Twitter style uh, chat client, and basically uh, I called it. I decided to rename it 
to Blitter, and it's a part of the Mastodon project. So Mastodon is the uh, uh, distributed network kind of version of what Twitter is, but Twitter's a, a centrally based server with, uh, you know, obviously with like repeater hubs and shit like that, but fucking, um, yeah, I, w- I wonder what that, that machine is like a machine of pure evil. If you take all the concentrated intent that's sent out on Twitter in the day, <laughs> it's just, just like, it's got the power, it's got the, it burns with the power of like a million suns. <laughs> yeah, he's, so, but my dog's going to kick my ass if I don't go out soon. The sun's about to go, uh, well, it's starting to fade. It's getting a little bit longer each day. I guess we're we're in that part of the uh, cycle now. So, But uh, it still gets dark pretty damn soon. It's dreary as, as hell. But next video I'm working on, uh, it'll just be kind of a... Uh, uh, what do you call those? Not a public service announcement. It's not really providing a service of any sort other than to hopefully entertain and maybe, you know, give a little, pass on a little bit of wisdom. I don't have a whole lot, but I learned a couple things in my day. But, uh, yeah, I'm working on, uh, I'm going backwards to another video that I'd already not made. It's, uh, I got the audio tracks finished, but I'm, working on the video for that as well and it involves a lot of technical stuff i'm working with uh blender and some uh camera tracking and uh face tracking and stuff like that so hopefully it's taking longer than i wanted it to but it's uh hopefully it'll pay off in the end that's all i'm doing man is just trying to increase my skill set and just you know as i go i go as i move i move and boom bada bing bong you know hey yeah so what else? Uh, yeah. Usually, about five hours ago, I would have already been outside. I usually, uh, I do, I, I took up archery some time ago, about a year ago almost. And, uh, yeah, I just go out. I, uh, I lob about a dozen or so arrows, and then, you know, dog likes, you know, she gets to go outside for a good, a good little while. And I piss around with camera gear and, that's my morning calisthenics <laughs> but uh, uh other than that i'm all i'm just right in here in the studio working i got three screens one here one here one here and they're enormous i i, I feel almost like i've got that uh you know that matthew broderick movie like war games and they have the uh the big huge uh freaking screen it's just ginormous screen. And back in those days, they didn't have flat screen panels. So, like, that was, like, they used a projection system, I think, for that. But anyway, it was still a massively heavy for, uh, eh, it was, that was a pretty, pretty epic, though. Anyway, I'm just fucking rambling now. But, uh, yeah, I have that whole War Games-esque thing going on here. It's like, yeah, it only took me 48 years to get here. But, hey, whatever. Uh, it is what it is. And we make stuff, yeah, yeah, yeah. but if you go to Echelon, we also do, like, I resell uh, hosting and uh, debates. I have a, a lot of, uh, I've a ton of experience in, since the 90s uh, dealing with uh, internet domain names, uh, DNS and shit like that. Um, so I, you know, I, I pretty much, I'd like to get, uh, uh, you know, I'd like to get some marketing done so I can start doing that because we've been we've had it available for a while, but not a lot of people know about it because we just kind of dropped the ball on the marketing. But I'm kind of I'm I'm I'm, I'm kind of you know pulled into the to the troubleshooting because like there's always something breaking down all the time. So kind of it is, and then I'm trying to create new content as well and do the live streams and well hey here we are. This is where we are today. So you know what? I'm just going to stop moaning and pissing about it and uh, just get back to work, I suppose. And uh, that, I guess, has been your daily Nuno Reno. There's going to be a lot more. I'm not going to be overstating the obvious. There's enough people covering what just happened here in Canada, so I'm not going about that today. That's We'll, we'll, we'll have some reflection time later this week. I... Uh, I got other fish I want to fry while I still have a chance to fry them. So, anyway, 
Cheers, guys. Peace out. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. And uh, this is the Daily Noon Arena. It's always noon sometime. Somewhere. <laughs> Woo. Oh, my God. All right. I'm out. Peace, guys. <laughs>